Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about reading and writing images. So I'm going to talk about what is reading and writing images, why do we need it, how does it happen, and we'll jump into some coding examples. Okay. Okay, so what is reading and writing images? So when you have a photo here, um, you have some location in your PC, some folder, you may want to extract that image or you may want to write that image. So that's basically the idea of reading and writing images. Okay, so why do we need to read and write images? So when we read and write images, usually the main thing is we want to interpret the image to do some sort of image processing on it. So right here is an example of me trying to find some of the years here with some basic uh, type of segmentation type of method. And then other times you may want to uh, write images for saving. So maybe you have some things for analysis that you're doing or maybe for pre-processing, okay? So depending on what stage of the image processing pipeline you're at, you may need to do different, different actions with your images, whether it's reading or writing. Okay, so how do images get read and written? Okay, so we briefly talked about it before, but basically you have a matrix that gets uh, read. So when you have a picture of this cat here, we're going to see a matrix when we read it. And likewise, when we write it, we're going to pass back some matrix that we see. And maybe the new matrix we're passing back could be the same or maybe modified. Maybe there's parts of the pixels that you're changing. Maybe you want to black it out and you make all of these to zero, for example. So you may do some sort of modification to the matrix that you have. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into some code. So let's have an example of here on how to read an image. So I'm gonna import the basic stuff that I need. So I have my CV2, import OS, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import numpy. So I'm gonna have my main function as usual. So let's go ahead and make a function called read image. Okay, so I will be calling it in here. So first off is I need to, uh, I have my image stored in demos images. So I have, I'm gonna get my main directory. I'm gonna call it root and get my directory here. Okay, so that's getting my directory and then my path of my image. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I like to organize my files into folders instead of just putting everything in one. So that's why I'm doing this step. But if you have your file directly in your main folder, you don't need to do this. Okay, so this is just something that I prefer. And then this is my folder called demo images, and then I'm gonna call this qpic1.jpg. Okay, so that is how I could set up my path. And then the next command here is I'm gonna call my image img, and I'm gonna read in the image and pass in the path. So the path is gonna be a string. So once I do that, to view it, you could do cv.show, and you need to pass in the name of your image and the image, which is, this is gonna actually be a matrix here. So for a 3D, image or image with color, you have a M by N by three, and then if it's grayscale, it's gonna be by one, okay? So um, with CV, typically you need to do a weight key, so, and you have a delay of zero, which means for infinity, so I could hover over this and you could see some of the documentation, but that's basically what it does. So when I run this, we should see an image pop up, which is my cute little kitty here. So now I can go ahead and close it, okay? So for the next part, we'll take a look at some of the ways you could view this matrix. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. I'll just call this debug equals one, so I know I'm breaking here. And then if I do debug Python file, we wanna take a look at this image. So if I scroll here, we can see some of the properties of this. Let me just move this stuff down. So notice here that this image here, if I hover over it, you can see all this data, right? If I go to my debug console, if I try typing image, I can see all this data, right? But this is not really a good way to look at this data. Um, here you can also see the shape of this image, which is 985 by 1170 by three. Um, the way I like to view this image is to view value in data viewer, okay? So what this does is it'll actually display um, all this data into like a Excel type of table format, okay? So this may take a while to load up for the first time, so we'll go ahead and let it load for a bit. So notice here that it tells you variables with over a 1,000 column may take a long time, so that's the warning that it tells you, right? So here I could specify, um, let's say I wanted to view the first channel. I could hit apply. And there you go. You can see this is a nice way to view all the numbers of your image. So you can see that these here are very high numbers, close to 255, which means that it's probably the background, which is close to white. And when I scroll down, these low numbers are dark because it's like the fur area, which is dark and black, which is low numbers, okay? Okay, so now we'll go over an example of how to write the image. So to write, to, to write an image to your folder, I'm gonna make a function here called write image. And again, I will have some path. So I'm gonna copy this part, which will be identical. So no point in rewriting that. And then you might want to specify your output path here. So I'm gonna call this out path. And my output path, for example, I could call it this. And maybe I'll name it output. Then if I do cv dot um, write, and then put output path. So output path is gonna be the path of your output. And then the next argument is the matrix that you're passing in, which will be the image. So if I write this and do uh, call write image, and if I run this, so if I run this and I check my demo images folder here, we will see that there's an output and that's the picture of the cat, okay? So that has confirmed that our writing is successful. So if you found this video helpful, Give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.